up and weed guards are all sprung out. Everything's good with the bait. Can't ask for anything else. Hey guys, we got a lot of great new patterns coming up this year that are going to be available at the uh, Musky Expos that uh, some of you see us at this winter. Uh, we've got a lot of high vis and uh, natural forage patterns uh, that are basically added to what we've you know had in the, in the past. Um, now, one question you know I do get a lot uh, about you know what what do you do with the bait cast fly? How do you how do you work that? And uh, you know basically what we do it's it's a jerk and pause. It's like a jerk bait, <coughs> glide bait. You know you're running it through the water, um, it, and just giving it a rest. And it's got a slight rise uh, when you're pulling it and it, it slowly sinks forward. And you know, the hackles and you know soft materials, they're doing a lot of the work uh, right there, still enticing fish while it's on the you know, pod. tip that I got uh, for you is if, you know, they are weedless and you know, if you are using uh, the weed guards on there rather than having them stowed, uh, if you feel anything, <laughs> it's almost always a fish. I mean, I've, I've gotten them wedged maybe once or twice, you know, between rocks or uh, you know, a, a Y and a stump, but uh, I mean, really, it's like if you feel anything, act like you're setting the hook because you don't want to miss any of those opportunities right there, you know, thinking that it was anything else because really it's going to just bump into stuff most of the time. And, uh, you know, if you feel any weight on there, you, you're going to want to set it like a fish is on there. So uh, that's my best tip there. Kind of if you get them tuned in just right, um, you can walk them like the dog underwater. So, you know, it's going to kind of zigzag if you've got it tuned in just right. And, uh, you know, the baits are obviously, um, you know, just tied on the bench. They're not, you know, pre-tuned, um, you know, uh, just for the sake of, uh, you know, what it is. So I'm gonna show you a couple of, of ways to get them tuned. So, you know, if you notice that you're throwing it out there and it's coming in one way and it's always cutting right or it's always cutting left or it's porpoising up, you've got to tune the head. And, and it's just a matter of looking, you know, here, this is the baitcast fly skeleton, so you can see it without all the materials around it. And basically, it's just all wire all the way through. And if you want to, if you want to, you know, play with it around and, and make it straighter, you know, obviously the straighter it is, uh, the straighter it's going to come in. And, you know, you just, you can, you, it's pliable, you can bend it, you know, obviously you don't want to kink it all the way at 90 degrees or anything, but... Um, you know, they, they do take a lot of, um, play and you can put them back into shape. You know, if you get one chewed or, um, you know, it's just, it hasn't been dialed in just yet. Uh, that's what you do. And there's, there's also a, a rear, uh, point here, right there. If you can see, you're, you're going to want to basically just put your finger on there and you can just move the hook around at that point. And that also can, uh, help dial in, uh, any, you know, problems you might be having with how straight it's running. So that's definitely a, a good thing to, to do. Um, tune them in when you get them so that they're running the way that, you know, is gonna be uh, the most enticing for the fish. Um, another thing too that uh, I've had asked is, how do you tune the weed guards? You know, uh, sometimes they get bent up, you get a fish thrashing in the net, um, you know, and they're spinning all around and you, you get it out and, you know, they might be pointing in, in odd directions. You know, ideally they're gonna, they're gonna be sticking almost straight out. So you see, that's basically just perpendicular right there. And you know, that's, that's where you want to have it. And there's a slight dip on the end here, right here, that helps it set under the hook. And then there's a slight bend that helps the, the wire go up so that it's where the point of the hook is. It gives it a little bit of extra um, to just kind of free itself from whatever it's coming through. But, um, one thing that happens is you take a, a round nose pliers if you got one um, and you can just put it on the end here and you can just shift it one way or another and that way it'll get your wire lengths even and it'll look straighter and also you can just you know gently just push up with your your fingers on the wire and until those weed guards are pointing out perpendicular um, if you haven't seen how to stow these uh, they are stowable. You just put them over the bend of the hook. So you're, you're just basically taking um, Inside the wire and you're just taking your thumb And just pushing it over so then it sits like that and You can do that with all of them. So if you're fishing in snag free areas, you know, obviously, you know, it just takes a uh, 30 seconds or so to you know between casts and you just dip them all down and they will just stay out of the way. So 
um, you know, then you get maximum hookup percentage, uh, and that's what it's all about. Uh, a new thing that we have uh, for this year is um, we got some hook trailers. Uh, this is another thing that you know I've had asked for on some custom orders. So what we got here is we got a uh, single, it's a single five aught, and we've got um, this is a four aught treble, and these are both rear trailers. And then we've also got a uh, three aught front treble for any of the bait cast flies. So um, you could you could put the rear treble trailer or the rear single trailer on any of our bucktails as well. Uh, maybe you want to add a plastic Texas rig it. Um, you know, still keep it kind of weedless that way. Um, it's another way to just have more hooks in the in the water uh, on your lure. <clears throat> I'm going to show you with this uh, skeleton here what what I'm doing in for installation. Uh, it's basically uh, a connection link and take this link and if you haven't worked with one of these before it's basically got an open end that's covered by that sleeve in the middle and you can depress either side and you can slide you can slide that that sleeve down so that it opens up an end so you can open up either end by doing this and these are just shrink tube in to these connection links <clears throat> Now with the first one, this is the easiest one, this is the, the front treble connector. And you're just going to want to push on the side closest to the hook so you can slide that sleeve down. And get this opened up. Alright, so you see I've got it opened up right there. And then what you're doing here, if you look real close at the skeleton here, there is a, a counterweight wire that you can see behind the sleeving material. And what you want to do is you want to get this link open a little bit and you want to punk, just find a, a sweet spot in the sleeving and make sure you go around that counterweight wire and you can see the weight in there and then you just pop out the other side all right and then you just reattach your link by getting it in there and sliding the sleeve up all right all right so that's the front one but you got to make sure you go around that front wire. That's important. For the back, um, you're going to want to pop out all the weed guards. So just pop them out so they're out of your way. And I'll demonstrate this with the treble trailer. And you're going to see there's a little rubber ring on the big side. And there's also a bend right there. And what you do is that bend faces up. And you're going to want to expose the large side of the loop. So you can take that ring off of there. Okay, and then you need to take your fly, pointing, you know, right side up, and on the bottom treble, you want to put this ring and get it, get it right up there. All right, so it's sitting right there, and then you take, you take this uh, open end with the hook, and what you're going to want to do is kind of stick it so this is facing down. Looks like a metal detector when you're doing it like that, all right? So then you take the open end and you go clockwise around the other two trebles that are facing upward so that it's sticking down like that. And then all you gotta do is put that ring back through the open end. So first you slide it back and then you get this little bit tight right there. All right, and then I got it back in there, and then I just reconnect the link. And what that rubber ring does is it just keeps it from moving around too far, but it allows it to move freely. And then you just uh, set your weed guards back, and you're good to go. So you can do the same thing, the, uh, the single hook connector um, that works exactly the same way. Um, and obviously I just showed you for the sake of ease, uh, so you don't have all the materials, um, you know, obstructing your view, but this is one of our tinsel flies with the front and rear treble trailers installed. So if you want a whole bunch of hookups, uh, you know, extra, extra chances out there, if you're fishing in snag free areas, uh, this is a, a way to still work these flies and, you know, just have more hooks, uh, attached to the bait. Uh, another cool thing that we got going this year is float packs that are available and what these do is basically um, they they take any of our slow sinking flies 
and they will turn them into a floater. So where previously we've offered, uh, you know, flies that are float only or slow sinking only, um, this basically allows you to do more uh, with, you know, one lure. So, um, and also it's a little bit heavier. The, the floating flies that we had were half ounce lighter than what they are now. These are gonna cast out there a bit farther for you. And essentially what, what this is, is it's sleeving material with, uh, with foam inside. It's got uh, some riveted points in here that have um, these little pins. And then it's got, uh, it basically cloth snaps and it just snaps together just like that around the existing skeleton of the bait. So uh, you can see the foam cylinder in here. And what you're gonna wanna do is just take your, uh, your, your uh, float pack here and with the, the inside snap up, you're really just gonna wanna put this pin halfway into the cylinder, right in the middle. And that's basically gonna put this snap on top of the bait. And then all you do is you're taking the other side pushing that wire in while you're uh, about to snap in the top. And basically it snapped on there and the, the pins just keep the, the whole pack from sliding back when you're casting it. So um, it's really simple to install. Um, you just, when you have the soft materials on an actual bait, you just gently try to slide them up and out of your way while you're installing this. If you get any in there, um, just gently pull them out so that they are on the outside. Um, and then, you know, one thing I can recommend too is after you use them, uh, you know, and they're wet, you want to let them dry out. I definitely take the float pack off, you know, so you're, you know, able to dry out the bait. Uh, I just love using these uh, just in case boxes. Uh, they're, they're great. Uh, we got uh, fly hangers that you can use. And pretty much then you just, uh, you know, take it in here and you're just able to let it hang dry and it's a piece of cake. Uh, sleeving options for um, these float packs. You can see a whole bunch of them right here. Uh, I think there's uh, something like eight or nine colors of the sleeving and seven different foam colors. So you can really take your own combination uh, uh, to put these with whatever fly that you've got. Um, and it's all fully customizable on the website. You just choose your, your two colors and you know we build them so that uh, you know it matches your fly. Uh, if you need recommendations, obviously we can do that too. Uh, you know, what's going to go best with uh, what fly you bought. Let's see, we got some additional add-ons here. Um, um, convertible bait cast fly, uh, the chopper prop combo. We got, you know, basically the chopper blades, different directions. So they're going to actually be pretty noisy. And you'll see that there's just a little sleeve up on the top here. And it just keeps the other parts from moving around. Um, the sleeve's there so you can actually hang it uh, back in the, the box, just like that. Just If you've seen our bucktails before, um, they all hang. They have a gap there that you can hang below the wire wrap. And they're just awesome in these boxes. I, I just, I can't say enough good things about them. Um, we also got the uh, Delta Surface add-on in here. And you know, it turns any of your flies basically into a buzz bait, uh, similar to the chopper prop combo. Um, and another thing that everybody really liked last year was the interchangeable clevises. So you basically turn your fly into a big bucktail um, and you can remove the blades just with a, it's just that easy and you know, you just lift up and push and they go back on. Uh, I went all last year and used these clevises. I lost one blade on an errant cast. I mean, uh, it's possible that a blade could come off, but you know, it's really gonna maximize what you're able to do with them. So it's, uh, it, it doesn't happen very often. If I had uh, a lot of eight, nine combos, I'd run nine tens, I'd run eight tens. Um, you can run Willows, Indianas, Colorados, mix it up. And you know it's just super easy, and and really that's that's something that you can do with our entire bucktail line, um, with the interchangeable clevises. You got two clevises, run it as a single blade, run it as a double. It, it just really opens things up. Uh, also got uh, one thing I wanted to get to with the uh, Delta Surface, and our Delta Surface models. This basically been our like surface large you know bucktail offering for a few years. And um, this year, I have uh, also added the chopper prop option into this. And essentially, you know, these are just like a kind of like a lightweight buzz bait. Um, Marabou gets a little heavier, so they, they do throw easier. But um, you know, if you don't have a reel that's that's spinning out real light, um, you know, like where you can uh, really get a long cast out of it, or maybe you got a windy day and you're having trouble getting these out there, I do have another solution for that. Um, you know, the reason these are light, you know, for starters, 
is because when they hit the water, the last thing you want them to do is go down and under. So the heavier it is, the more they're gonna penetrate the water rather than being able to start reeling and keep it on top. Water Gremlin, if you just go to your, most bait shops are gonna have these. These are, these are basically snap-on dipsy sinkers and they just have a little plastic top and a little snap-on opening. And where you found that counterweight wire uh, on, the, uh, on the fly earlier when we were uh, installing that front hook trailer, these have a counterweight similar to that. And you can't really see all that great, but you can see the weight coming out. And all you gotta do is just take this sinker and find where that, that wire comes out in the front and just snap it on. You can do it in the back or the front, it doesn't matter. Um, the back is easier to find. There we go. So now I've just added a half ounce of weight onto here. And I think that pretty much covers most of it. Uh, I mean, we got a whole bunch of new patterns uh, coming out uh, this year that you guys are all gonna see uh, at the Muskie Expos if, you, if you're at one of the uh, shows that we're at. Otherwise, everything's online at MuntsAngling.com. You can find videos there, uh, full product customization. It's all ready for you, so go check it out. Thanks for watching.